What's going on YouTube? Hungarian Experiment here and today I'm going to show you how I treat, cook, store, prep, whatever you want to call it for salmon. I messed around with salmon for about two years. I've thrown out a lot of meat and I have to say I've come to a level where I think I've perfected it. I store it in the fridge for about two months. My girlfriend loves it. I love it. We have it about once to twice a week and it's a great meal. It's uh, It is high in fat but salmon is very high in protein as well and the fat from salmon is very good for your joints. Now the first and most important thing with any type of raw meat is sanitation. Before I started here, I, as you can see, my counter I was cleared. I wiped everything down with Lysol. I made a bunch of food safe bags, which is also part of sanitation. Be prepared. Have everything ready to go. Know how you're going to have your setup and be ready. You don't want to be touching touching the board, touching the knife, the end of the knife, and then touching every part of the bag, and then having half of your freezer be contaminated, and then touching your sink, touching your handle, going back and forth, and then touching your face. You want to know what you're doing. Always keep your hands, and always know what's touching raw meat, what's not touching raw meat. So I have the bags prepared. I have about 13 bags here, food safe bags. This is the first time I've really done salmon in food safe bags. I've done it in Ziploc bags a lot and I have no trouble. Not like the steak. The steak I find gets very defrosted and freezer burnt. Sorry, not defrosted. It gets very frozen and freezer burnt. And it's an issue. It, it ruins the steak. It can only sit in the freezer for about two weeks before it, it's not as great as it would be. So, salmon I found I can leave in a Ziploc bag for two months. I just throw it in the sink. Uh, to let it defrost with some cold water in a couple hours. It tastes just like it does now. So I've had no problems, but I want to experiment with the food safe bags. So first thing, sanitation done. Second thing, let's talk about these salmons. So again, I got this at Costco. Normally I try to go for a little cheaper one just because this is going to be wrapped up. This is one gigantic salmon. Normally I like to go for a little smaller one but whatever happens, happens. This one is $37.52 here in price. 1.7 kilograms. And this one's 1.8 kilos at $39.13. So I'm gonna cut up this one, put it in bags, and show you how much I can get out of this one salmon. Normally it should be around three to four dollars per bag and they should be about five to six ounces per bag. So let's see how that goes. Now what I like to do is I like a couple portions. I like my salmon to have a couple nice fatty pieces, a couple nice charred pieces. So I like to just right away slice down the ends from uh, end to end. And that way I have a bunch of different portions, a bunch of different sizes, which works very well for me because uh, my girlfriend comes over and we like to have a whole bunch of salmon. So normally I'll throw two or three bags of salmon in to defrost. Now when I'm by myself, I just want one. Some days I want more salmon than others, or depending on my macros or whatever I'm trying to fit in, I need more or less. So it's good that I have different size bags. Boom, nice fat piece. I'll just lay that there. Nice flay, about an inch thick. I'll just throw that there. I'll just keep working down until I have a bunch. I got this knife for Christmas. Never sticks, I'm just going to try it out. It's supposed to cut through anything. It is nice, it's pretty sharp, but I'm going to stick with the big one for now. Put that one in the sink.
All right, so we're nice and all cut up. Now, all I've done is hold the end of this knife. Earlier, I picked up the whole salmon with both hands, and I'm not sure if you saw, but my sister came in at one point, so I set everything down. I didn't touch the knife at that point. I set everything down, and I washed my hands again. So now I have everything all cut up, and I can go and grab the camera with this hand because I know it hasn't touched salmon. I know it's free of uh, any germs. Okay, so here's it all sliced up. And as you can see, there's different sizes. That's different fatness. Now this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen. Almost twenty fillets right there. Nice fat fillets. Now I'm gonna cut most of these in half, like right around this white part. So that way I have nice fat fillets there and then I have a nice tail. And I'll mix some of the smaller tails and fillets with a bigger one. And then hopefully I'll get some even size bags. One of the things that I think should be brought up for discussion regarding salmon is their pink color. Many people base the choice on what salmon fillet they will pick not based on size or weight but the color and pinkness of the meat. Now I agree this is a great way to determine the health and diet of wild salmon, but if you're purchasing salmon from a grocery store over a market, then there's a high possibility that what you are eating is farmed salmon. In fact, at least half the salmon we eat in North America comes from fish farms. Wild salmon get their pink or reddish flesh color through their diet of krill, plankton, and other small organisms. These organisms contain a natural antioxidant. It's also in the same family as beta carotene, which is found in carrots. Similarly to wild caught salmon, farm raised salmon are provided color through their diets by ingesting these carotenes. Now, I have no problem with supplementing an animal's diet that I am going to eat. I mean, I supplement my own diet. The issue that I am concerned with is that I attempt to make all my supplements natural. The stuff we feed salmon to get the color is synthetic and it's approved by the FDA. As well, similarly with cows, farmed fish are fed soy and corn based food which lowers omega 3s and seriously complicates the life of the animal. So does the pink color of farmed salmon really matter? Yes and no. Although I've done hours of research and have yet to find a thoroughly documented study, in my opinion, if you're looking through your grocery store for salmon and you see it's farmed, then I really don't think the color plays a huge role in whether that fish was healthier than others. Maybe it just ate less of that synthetic crap that could be having negative effects anyways. Just so you guys can get a view here, I find the rough side on these bags or the rolls that come with the bags. So this is a roll. It's basically sealed on these, this end here and this end here and it's open on this side. So you cut it to the length you want. I chose about two of the, two and a half of these notches that they have running down the sides and I cut them into these size bags. What you first do is you seal it and then you vacuum and then you vacuum and seal it. Now the bags have a rough side and a soft side and I've been finding to use a soft side works the best. So I am using one hand here so bear with me. Let's put it in this little slot the end of the bag. Close it down. Click. Click. Hit vacuum and seal. And watch. Red light comes on, it's sealing the end of the bag. Ooh. Click the side buttons, pop it open, and then you have vacuum sealed salmon. Alright, so out of that haul, 
this one here is $37. The other one was $39. It was uh, 0.1 of a kilogram heavier. I managed to get nine of these food safe bags. So I just rounded up to $40. $40 divided by nine bags. Of course, my phone goes off. Is if you can see it there, $4.44. So each of these bags is about $4.44. Let's see how much they weigh. This one is, oh, I'm shaking up this, right? It's 6.6, .6, can't decide, 6.7 ounces. This one's 7.7. .7. Wow, I didn't think they were going to be this big. I, uh, it's my first time using the food safe bags, like I said, so I kind of over, overestimated, but this is still good. Seven. All right, so they're all about 6.5 to 8 ounces. One's 8 ounces. They're all around 6.5 to 7.5 ounces.